Well, happy Easter morning. I want you to think with me this morning about the most amazing things that you have ever seen. See, I think about events and locations. I think about being in the room the day my kids were born. I think about the first time that I saw the Grand Canyon or, or looking out of an airplane window at the dark African horizon to see the incredible colors of sunrise. I want you to pause just for a moment and think about your moments in time. And I also want you to think about that dark morning when before dawn, the women hurried to Jesus' tomb. So what the women found that morning would change the world forever. See, the world's greatest tragedy would be turned into the world's greatest triumph. Our scripture in Luke takes us there this morning. We'll find what was discovered, how grief turned to amazement. We'll see what was reported and how the angel's words changed our perspective on this life here on earth. Finally, we'll see what the women reported is confirmed. So we're going to be looking at Luke 24, 1 through, 3, 1 through 12 this morning. And as we do that, let me just ask you to do two things. If you will, pause your device. And I want you to pray this morning as we begin our time together in our online Life Group Sunday School class. And pray for these two things today. Now, first of all, thank God for your salvation. And secondly, think about that person that's in your life, that one that's in your life who does not know Christ as Lord and Savior. And I want you to pray for them this morning. I mean, good to have you with us today. Look forward to our time together. All right, well, let me just read to you this morning, chapter 24 of Luke, verses 1 through 3. And the Bible says this, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone was rolled away from the tomb, they went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. We're going to be looking at those verses first this morning. But before we do that, let me introduce you to two special guests that we have here this morning. First of all, we have Dave Jackson. He's our Minister of Spiritual Development. It's good to have him with us here today. Secondly, we have Tammy Kirkland. She's our Director of Children and Preschool Ministries. It's so good to have her with us here today. Thank you, Pastor Carl. It's good to be here. Let me welcome you back. Again, turn to Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. And let me just again remind you, that person that you prayed for, let me just encourage you this week to reach out to them, or even when this is lifted, to, to share with them the love of Christ that you've experienced. Man, what a great Easter for them to be a part of. Now remember, Luke 24, 1 through 3. See, all the Gospels record the amazing, this amazing event. These women were likely the same women who had been at the cross that Friday that Jesus was crucified. See, they had come as soon as Sabbath was over, because what they wanted to do was prepare the body, something that they had not been able to do on that Friday. Think about this. What range of emotions would we expect these women to feel? The Bible does not record the conversation, but what the Bible does share with us in Mark is that they were concerned about the rolling of the stone. And they get to the tomb, and the Bible tells us that the stone was already rolled away. There must have been some apprehension from these women. See, the situation is not what they had thought that they would see. I and mean, think about it. God's way is always amazing. They walk into the tomb, but the body wasn't there. It wasn't there. Many people today, they struggle with the open tomb. Some might dismiss it and say it was a fairy tale. The others try to explain it logically that maybe someone stole the body. But here's the deal. Explanation of the empty tomb is all the heart of Easter and the heart of the Christian faith. See, your explanation of how you feel about the empty tomb describes who you are in your Christian faith. Now think about this. We're going to look at Luke uh, verses, chapter 24, verses 4 to 9. And the Bible says this. The Bible says in verse 4, that while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified, and they bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead, asked the men. He is not here, but he has been resurrected. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, then be crucified and rise on the third day? And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the leaven, and to all the rest. I mean, what an amazing passage that we're going to look at. I mean, this is critical in our faith. Dave Jackson, our Minister of Spiritual Development, he's going to explain that to us. Dave, explain this verses to us, if you will. Thank you, Brother Carl. Uh, man, this is honestly one of the most exciting texts for me in Scripture because it truly changes everything. And as we look at this, um, sometimes it's, it's difficult to remember that these are real people. Uh, these ladies that came to the tomb to see to, to anoint Jesus' body, they're actually real people. It's easy to read scripture sometimes and just think they're characters like uh, like cartoon characters or movie characters, but these ladies had come to the tomb. And if you could imagine just their thought 
process coming to the tomb is they came, they wanted to anoint Jesus. They'd spent the last couple of days uh, watching him be crucified. Matthew tells us that they sat opposite the tomb when they buried him. And the truth is, when they came, they were just expecting to carry out what it was that they had planned to do just to anoint his body. And this is what's remarkable to me because I can, there, there's a, a practical nature that comes to this. As they came to the tomb, they were probably thinking, man, how are we going to get this stone out of the way? How's this going to happen? And when they get there, when they're met, by what scripture tells us is two men. We find out later that they're angels, but the scripture says that they were perplexed about what they saw. And this idea of being perplexed is to become filled or have confusion with, with the lack of understanding. And you can imagine this, when you come to the tomb and all of a sudden, man, the stone is rolled away. And these men, scripture tells us these angels, they were dazzling in their apparel. That means it was like lightning. So these men are uh, almost like lightning and they come to them and they say, uh, very clearly, uh, and why do you seek the living among the dead? And that's that's kind of a, an interesting question because I have to confess to you, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went home. Uh, my, both of my parents had passed. My dad died very early, about 52 years old. Uh, he died about 20 years ago. My mom died 10 years ago, uh, and this is kind of the anniversary of her death this week. So a couple of weeks ago when I was at home, I went to their graveside. I don't do this very often. A couple of times I went by and just looked at the gravestone, looked at the, t- at the tomb, and I thought, man, that's what I'm coming here for is because I'm expecting them to be here. Well, what happened when these ladies came to Jesus, they were expecting him to be there. So the question, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Isn't to me a, 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 like a, an unreasonable question. It's just, they have something else they want to say. And this is remarkable. The, the ladies were uh, in awe. They were, they were uh, frightened, if you will. They were in desperation by these, these angels. So here's what happens. They ask the question, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here for he is risen. They said, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. I will say this today on this most celebratory days. Easter, this resurrection of Jesus is an everyday, every minute thing. I will tell you, they came. We live in a world, first and foremost, that is broken. Man, there is loss. Today, we have to recognize our brokenness and our loss. C.S. Lewis put it like this. He said, and profoundly and succinctly, the death of a beloved is an amputation. If you think about this, these ladies that had walked with Jesus for so long come to the tomb expecting man to anoint Jesus. But what's happening now, something totally different. He is alive. These these angels tell him, man, why do you seek the living among the dead? What had happened? Jesus had told them multiple times that he was gonna do this. This was gonna be the process that on the third day he was gonna rise. And if you see what happened here, it said they remembered his words. I would encourage us today as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate the risen Lord, that we were, we're reminded that we live in a broken world, that Jesus came to rescue us from that world. That, that, that world is broken, it's painful, it hurts, there's loss. But at the same time, here's the great reality that the uh, resurrection changes everything. The empty tomb changes everything. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to the fullest. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. We know that today that the world is broken, that Christ has risen. The Bible tells us that he died for our trespasses, but was raised for our justification. Today, we as believers in Christ, it's like we have never sinned because of what he has done. If you know what happens here, Jesus rose from the grave. So today, wherever you find yourself, whatever loss you're experiencing, may you know, man, that the empty tomb changes everything. And finally, I would say to us this, may we remember his words. He promised us over and over and over, that he was gonna come and save us and rescue us, and he did. And through the resurrection, we can have life. Jesus tells us in John 14, 19, one of my favorite verses, because I live, you also may live. So today, as we celebrate this resurrection, as these ladies came to the tomb, seeing something they really weren't expecting, they were reminded of what Jesus said. They didn't believe even though the body wasn't there, it, it took them a little while, but their faith began to grow. And I will tell you this, today as you and I, recognize the brokenness of this world today as we recognize that the resurrection of Jesus changes everything. And man, today we remember his words. We will do exactly what these ladies did. They went back and told everyone. Man, Dave, thank you for those verses. What a great explanation of those verses for us. You know, as we look at Luke chapter 24, verses 10 through 12, then we've got to remember, how does the act of remembering connect us to believing? Here's what I mean by that. You know, think about it, that this Easter, With everything going on, as we remember, it strengthens our faith. 
See, Easter confirms our faith. And in just a moment, Tammy's going to explain those verses for us, and, and we're going to be reminded, how did the women respond? And remember, we've already had that question. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? If you will, read with me, chapter 24, verses 10 through 12, and the Bible says this, And here are the ladies, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, mother Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen clothes, so he went home amazed at what had happened. What an incredible verse as we think about this Easter. Tammy, explain those verses for us, if you will. Okay, so here we are at verse 10 in chapter 24. Dave talked to us about the women. Well, it's here that the writer Luke tells us that it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. What's so interesting about women being the ones that actually found the tomb empty is if you know anything about biblical history at all, women were not considered to be good witnesses. They were not considered to be worthy to be a witness. So biblical scholars will tell you that the fact that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John put Mary Magdalene at the place of the empty tomb actually validates it more and makes it more evidence. Because see, if they wanted to make it more believable, they would have made men the witnesses. But because it was women, they did it, they wrote that exactly as it happened. And so that's really valid evidence there. So here we move to the part where they run to tell Peter all about it. Well, Peter, if you read in the NIV version, he says, this is nonsense, idle talk, whatever. He doesn't believe them because they're women or, or just because it's a sparse story, it's just almost unbelievable. But here's what happens. He runs to the tomb anyway. And when he gets there, he sees that the tomb is actually empty. This is the most exciting thing ever. Here's the point that I wanna make this morning. If you'll remember, that many, many times when Jesus walked with them, he told them, he said, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to suffer death. I'm going to die. And then on the third day, I'm going to raise, be raised again. Um, they forgot about that. Peter did at this moment. And that's the saddest thing of all that we do. We have this Bible full of biblical truths and full of promises that Jesus made us. And yet when we get in times of distress, we forget those promises. So today I just want to encourage you that he is alive. Just like um, Pastor Dave said in his moment of talking to you, Jesus is alive. Let's remember all of his promises that he's made to us. And I want to encourage you in that today. And God bless you, Pastor Carl. All right, Tammy, thank you for those great explanations of those verses. I mean, as we come to this time, as we come to this uh, closure here, let me just remind you, man, the death, the burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it's for all believers. And let me remind you of that person that you prayed for. Let me just encourage you to continue to pray for that person and connect with them and share them about the love of Christ. Let me ask you a couple questions here this morning. How does the empty tomb impact your life? Think about that this Easter. You know, live every day like it's Easter. Now, as we think about what's happening here, this, this uh, time frame that we're in, I want to share a verse with you. you know, at the end of Luke 24, verse 36, the Bible says this, And as they were saying these things, he himself, talking about Christ, stood among them. He said to them, Peace to you. And it's a different Easter this year, and I understand that. And I know with this COVID-19 going around, you know, there's tragedy happening. But here's what we know. God promises us that he's there with us, that he's standing there beside us. And so my prayer for you this morning as we think of us as an incredible Easter Sunday, an Easter like we've never had in our lifetime, God says, peace to you. Share that peace with others. Have a great Easter. God bless you. And remember, at 9 o'clock this morning, we have our online worship service. And remember, at 1 o'clock on WMBB, we'll also see the service as well. God bless you and have a wonderful Easter day.